Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be able to attend this year's Open Source Summit in North America. Uh, the Cloud Summit it looks pretty cool. Um, today, I will give you an overview of our open source project, Mubus, uh, its origins, current progress, and the status of our community. Uh, so here is my uh, topic today, Mubus, build up the unstructured data service. So guys maybe heard about the um, terminology RDS, uh, which is the uh, relational data service. That is for um, traditional structured data. Um, today, we are talking about the uh, emerging unstructured data service. So first, um, let me introduce myself. I'm Jane Gu, a Zillius Partner, Technical Evangelist. I'm also a voting member of the uh, Technical uh, Advisory Committee at the uh, RFAI Foundation. Um, period to join Zillis, I worked for ICBC, IBM, Morgan Stanley, and Huawei. Um, I had been a database engineer for 14 years. Uh, in these two years, recent two years, I turned to act as a uh, database product manager. Okay, a little bit more information about um, our company, Zillis. Um, so who is Zillis? Um, Zillis is the uh, aberration of Zillion of Zillions. Um, so you could know by name that we are engaged in data related technology. Um, we are a technology startup company uh, founded in Shanghai. Uh, we focus on developing data science software based on heterogeneous computing. Um, we drive our software business model through uh, the open source. Um, our vision is to reinvent data science, uh, to provide data-related technologies for new domain, new scenario, new requirement, and to um, help people better discover the value uh, containing data. So our open source project, Mulus, has now joined the RFAI Foundation as an incubation project. So Zillis is now um, a major contributor to uh, Mubus project. So talking about the data, uh, we generally um, divided the data into three major categories. The first one is structured data, including uh, numbers, dates, strings, and so on. Um, the second is semi-structured data, mainly includes text information with a certain format, such as various uh, system logs. Um, the third one is so-called unstructured data, uh, like pictures, video, voice, natural language. So these are not easy to be understood by the computer. So relational database, traditional big data technology, um, these technology are to solve the problem challenge of structured data. And uh, semi-structured data uh, can be handled by text-based uh, search engine. Only the unstructured data, which accounts for around 80% of the total data, has been lacking in um, effective analytic methods in the past. So until the rise of AI, the deep learning technology in recent years, the unstructured data analysis is accelerated so the charm of the uh, deep learning model is that you can, it can co convert the unstructured data, uh, which originally the computer is difficult to handle, into the feature information that the machine is easy to understand. So usually the output is like the vectors, the matrix shown here. So the analysis of unstructured data is transformed to uh, vector computation or vector similarity search, this kind of thing. Um, so how do people uh, usually use the AI technology to uh, analyze the unstructured data? So here I give an example. Um, it's, an, it's a uh, flow-based AI application. Um, this is a very typical scenario. 
So assuming we have uh, one video we want to uh, analyze, we want to process. So we can create some operation streams. So usually called pipeline. Uh, the leftmost pipeline captures the video frames and then extracts the feature from the captured image. So here, for example, we can use the VGG model, a model with excellent general generalization capacity, capability. So at last, we got uh, image feature vectors in the leftmost pipeline. So the middle pipeline handles sound. So eventually, it generates audio vectors that are converted from the uh, sound. And the rightmost uh, uh, pipeline automatically labels some attributes for the video. So if you have other special requirements, uh, you can also build a new pipeline to do related processing. So this is why flow-based AI applications are so popular, because they are so flexible. Um, Developers don't even need to have to write code. I mean, there are web-based interface to help users to compose those new process. Uh, even if you don't have any idea about how to start this uh, uh, pipeline, you can always find some uh, useful samples as a referral, as a, begin as a start. But in this way, it also brings us a new challenge. So the data becomes very fragmented. So you see, it was originally only one video but with the operation of the pipeline, it was gradually transformed into different data, spread it in different corners in different pipeline. So what shall we do? So um, let's turn to the um, turn to the view to the uh, traditional hierarchical view. Um, so we can see here, uh, both the top input and in the, bot and the uh, bottom output are unstructured data. The AI technology mainly functions at the middle two layers, the green layer uh, model inference and in the blue layer um, data service. Uh, the task of model inference is to transform unstructured data into feature vectors. Uh, models are pre-trained, but serving them efficiently is still not easy. But the good news is um, there are already some uh, mature projects in the industry, such as NVIDIA's TensorRT, Intel's um, OpenVINO, Microsoft's own Onyx RT, and recently Google is also uh, developing TensorFlow runtime TFRT. But there is no comprehensive solution for the data service layer. So some people put those feature vectors in a structured database. Others might put it in HDFS and then analyze those vectors through Spark. Also, you can use some ANN libraries. Uh, so in this area, everyone make their own try uh, attempt um, how to, ana to analyze those uh, vectors. So the challenge is how to manage and uh, analyze the vectors efficiently. Although a large number of pre-trained uh, models are now available, but AI technology is still difficult to go production because at the data service layer, the cost is still very high. So how to address this challenge? Um, our answer is to uh, build up the um, unstructured data service uh, which is based on the uh, Milvus project. Um, so it contains four parts. Uh, the first part is uh, vector similarity search, uh, which includes um, high dimension dense vectors, uh, which is frequently used in deep learning scenarios. And also uh, there is uh, sparse vectors in traditional machine learning scenario. Um, the second part is attribute. So those structured uh, label um, like streams. So combine these attributes and uh, vectors, we can provide uh, the capability of hybrid search. So the third part is to support multi-models. 
Um, as in the previous example, a video has vectors of from of different dimensions. So there are image vectors and uh, audio vectors. Uh, so in the real world, uh, multimodal search is a, a, a general requirement. So uh, we need to introduce the concept of entity for the unstructured data. So an entity could contain multiple vectors from different dimensions or different models. Uh, the first part here is the uh, scoring component. So in some scenarios, uh, like multimodal search we just mentioned, because we introduce different models, then the fully connected layer of different model, uh, they might need to be uh, further fused to uh, form a new scoring mechanism for the uh, final analysis of the uh, unstructured data. So at this moment, uh, Milvus already um, has built up the, uh, built up the uh, vector analysis capability. We are constantly improving and enhancing it. Uh, we are currently developing the uh, functionality of attribute filtering so we can support the uh, hybrid search uh, uh, in, a, in soon, maybe the, maybe the second half of this year. So we are planning, we, we are planning the functions of Marimoda and a scoring. Um, those two things are relatively complex, so it may come later. So eventually, uh, Mulus is not just positioned to be a high performance vector search engine. Uh, we want to build a comprehensive infrastructure software for the uh, unstructured data service based on Mulus. So, so maybe people, you have been convinced that we needed an unstructured data service, but you might still have this question, why not to build it through a relational database or big data technology? A vector also looks like a number. Uh, what's the difference between a vector and a number? So to be precise, a vector is consisted of a set of numbers. The difference between vector and a number I think there are two major aspects. Uh, first, uh, the common operation of vectors and the numbers are different. So numbers, uh, for example, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division is the most common operation on numbers. But vectors, the most common operation is to uh, calculate the similarity. So you see here, I'm giving the formula for uh, computing Euclidean distance, uh, you can see the computation of vectors is much higher than the uh, normal numeric calculation. Um, secondly, the index organization of the data is different. So between two numbers, uh, the value can be compared with each other. So we could create the number index based on algorithm like B-tree. But between two vectors, we cannot perform comparison. We can only calculate the similarity between them. So the vector index is usually based on algorithm like uh, approximate uh, nearest neighbor, ANN algorithm. So here I give two ANN approach. Uh, one is that the, the left side is the uh, clustering index, the index based on clustering algorithm. And the right side is uh, graph index, for example. So because of these significant differences, uh, the traditional database and big data technology are difficult to meet the requirements of vector analysis. The algorithms they support, the scenarios uh, they target are all different. Um, so here is the uh, big picture of Mulvus. Uh, I want to highlight four major parts here. Uh, so the first one is the uh, uh, support of heterogeneous computing. So I mentioned earlier, uh, ZS is uh, developing data science software based on uh, heterogeneous computing. So we have some experience in this area. So during Mulvis design, um, we thought about how to support different computing resource so that we could accelerate such a um, computation intensive scenario. 
the heterogeneous computing resources supported in MUVAS uh, so far include, uh, for example, SSE instruction set, AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets on x86 platforms. Um, we also support NVIDIA GPU, uh, which is later than the Pascal microarchitecture, the ARM 64-bit processor. Um, now we are working with some partners um, about how to further extend movers to uh, risk five processors, but this work is still in very early stage. Uh, the second part is the um, data management function. So we want to provide an unstructured data service. So the function of data management is critical. Uh, Milva supports like data partition, data sharding, deletion of vectors, and also uh, stream injection. So you can um, dynamically uh, insert new vectors into Milvus and it will uh, create uh, index dynamically for the new data once it triggered a threshold. Um, and then the third part is the adoption and improvement of the AN algorithm libraries. So the capability of vector search is the uh, fundamental function uh, in unstructured data service. So Milvus can provide good vector search performance by adopting and improving the well-known AN algorithm libraries like FACE, ANNOY. Uh, the fourth is support for the uh, application development environment. So to enable AI developers to build their applications on Mulus, uh, we provide a number of uh, application development environments like uh, Python, the most people use, uh, C++ because Mulus is developed by C++ and also Java. I mean, Java still a lot of business applications they need Java and the Go and uh, like uh, REST HTTP uh, API. So since Mu uh, since vector search is a computation intensive scenario. Um, but it also has no, for example, like drawing uh, operation like in, in the RDS area. So it's relatively easy for distributed deployment. So here is an example of a distributed deployed movers. We provide a proxy and then we can um, distribute the data over different movers nodes. Uh, so when searching, we simultaneously query the nodes, all the nodes, and merge the result sets together before uh, returning it to users. Um, so although Milvus is a server, um, so it's more complicated than algorithm libraries. Uh, so, but people are very curious about the uh, performance comparison. Um, since performance, I mean, impacts the hardware cost, so it really matters. So, and they want to set an expectation. So, when they start to use Mulvers, how, what, what kind of performance, what kind of hardware they need to uh, invest for this kind of scenario? Uh, so, we have run through the. Um, um, AN benchmarks. Um, it is a set of well known AN benchmark tests. Um, so, thanks for Martin, Eric, Alec for developing the benchmark test. Uh, we focused it on GitHub and uh, run through all the test scenario on Mulvers uh, in several uh, different public cloud environments like. Uh, AWS, Azure, Arduino, and we also ran the test on our uh, local servers, um, including our notebook. I mean, most people, data scientists or AI developer, they have a GPU-powered notebook, so we, we test a small-scale uh, data sets on notebooks, so we know uh, 
if it's possible for the user, I mean, the developer to, to just use their own laptop to do some application prototype. And also we tested on a local server with two uh, Intel uh, 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 x86 um, uh, CPU. So here I only captured one chart of Mulus uh, but the benchmark test actually it generated a bunch of reports. So if you want to find all those details, uh, you can visit our website, mulas.io. So just for the example here, um, this is the, uh, uh, the QPS, uh, kind of QPS comparison between, uh, I mean, most people ask about uh, the if I just use raw face or I use the uh, face type uh, IVF index through Mulas, how is the uh, performance difference? So uh, we also want to evaluate how much uh, system overhead Mulas introduced in this scenario. So we we, we test this pretty seriously. Um, so you can see here. If you are looking for a high recall ratio, then uh, the system overhead can be, it's very small. I mean, you can see here those, these dots, mirrors and face, they almost performed on the same level. But if you are looking for a low recall scenario, I mean, some scenario people may only need like 30%, 40% recall ratio, then this time you will see um, the system, I mean, the server side overhead will, will matter, uh, will impact the uh, uh, throughput. So for most people, um, they're using the high recall ratio scenario, like uh, larger than 80%, 90%, then the system overhead is relatively small. So uh, it won't be a big, big challenge uh, when you migrate from phase to Mulas. Okay. All right, so this is how Mulas was born. Um, our initial idea of this project was uh, in October uh, 2018. So that time we were involved in a project. Uh, we need to deliver the vector uh, search function. Um, we try to do it in our uh, structure database. We have a structure database product, but it didn't fit fit well. Um, so that's why we start to think about this challenge seriously. So on um, April 2019, we released Mulas 0.1, and uh, we tested it in our first seed user and improved Mulas a lot. So that time it was still not an open source project because we are not sure if we are doing the right, uh, we are not do, doing it right, or if it's will be, re, I mean, if it, people will re, need it. So um, we, we tried our first uh, CD user and uh, listened to their feedback. So they give, they give us a lot of confidence. So uh, we decided to, we, we decided Mulvus 0.5, that release is a um, pretty ready release for Go Public. So we, uh, so we put this release um, to the GitHub to, to, to fully open source it. So um, in this year, March this year, uh, Mulvus is joining the uh, RFAI Foundation as an uh, incubation project. So today, if you check the uh, uh, development activity webpage of uh, Linux Foundation, you will see uh, Mulvus is the most active project from the software development perspective in the Linux Foundation. So uh, let me show you some numbers about Mulvus project so far. Um, yeah. Yeah, here is the current status of uh, Milvas project. 
uh, we have made over 5,000 commits and uh, 14 releases. Um, so, and we have currently hundreds of community users. So some of them have already put Mubus in production. Um, I think that's pretty, I mean, a good thing. I mean, Mubus is still a young project. I mean, less, less than one year since it go open source. But why people start to build their AI application upon Mubus and put it into a production environment? I think the most attractive benefits are um, two things. First is it's easy to use. And second, it's fast, which means uh, you don't need uh, a very high cost hardware. It can be run with very low hardware cost. So developer could make their attempt with the uh, pretty low cost. I mean, those AI applications, next page, I will uh, start to share with you guys the um, real world use case. Um, you can think about why people want to adopt AI technology into their product. Does AI technology provide the uh, core value or it creates some value add in, into the existing application or products? So, I mean, those, I mean, the, the answer of those questions really tells why they try to use Mubus to make these, those try. Okay, uh, so this is the first uh, use case. Um, it is a so-called intelligent writing assistant. Uh, so the software vendor, uh, it's their core business is to deliver these uh, office products on um, desktop computer, on mobile, on web pages. So they, they want to uh, increase the uh, to increase the uh, value add of their original Office product and attract more use to attract more users. So they designed this intelligent uh, writing assistant. So it's supposed to help people to compose some kind of essay, uh, like year-end work summary, cover letter, or referral letter. So the software vendor first collect a bunch of corpus data, and uh, after cleansing. These data are encoded with text CNN to uh, extract the paragraph and the symmetric summary. Then they will be further encoded with InfraSend model. At last, you get the vectors and they store them in Mubus. So when any user submit the writing request, uh, it will go through InfraSend encoder and perform vector search in Mubus. Uh, the search result will be further transferred to a, a draft essay. So people can make some little uh, modification points and uh, just quickly get a, what, what they want. Okay, the second example, um, it is a uh, big data company. They have collected a lot of corporate credit data uh, in China, and also they collected around 55 million trademark images of Chinese company. So they want to provide their members the function about search a company through the trademark image. So they build the image search function upon fine to the VGG model and mules. So since nobody knows how many people will become their new members just for this new AI function, search company through trademark images. So the development and the hosting cost is very sensitive. And now they are very happy with the performance we was provided. It's around 20, 20 milliseconds on the cloud GPU server. I mean, uh, the cloud GPU server at this moment is still not like NVIDIA A100, those kind of dockerized capability GPU. The virtual GPUs at this moment is still um, not perform as good as the uh, physical one, but still they got the, the, the 
performance result they need. So, um, so in these two um, use cases, you can see the AI technology, they are not the core value of the whole product, but they create some value add point to attract more users to use their products. But I mean, at the beginning, nobody knows if these function can attract how many people to join to become their new uh, users, members. So they're very, very sensitive about the uh, investment on those uh, functions. Uh, how long it will take them to uh, develop the function and uh, what is the um, uh, hardware hosting cost is all their concerns. So um, I think Milvers in these cases provide them a very uh, low cost I mean, uh, choice for, for, for try out their uh, idea about those AI technologies and see if those AI technology will really attract more users to their, for, for their product. If, if those, uh, if those uh, functions didn't work as they expect, they, then they can just, I mean, put them away and uh, try another different AI, AI technology in different functions. So I think that's why people, uh, these people use Mulevers to create their um, applications to adopt more AI te technology in their products because it's uh, fast, to fast to develop and uh, uh, low cost to host. Um, so the last use case, so, so just mentioned, like I just mentioned in the previous two examples, the AI technology is not creating the core value, uh, but in this case, uh, actually the efficient vector search is uh, creating the core value. Um, this is a pharmaceutical user. Um, they want to build up a platform to analyze over um, billions of uh, molecules to, uh, anal to analyze those uh, chemistry structures. So um, they first will translate the molecule expression into uh, 1024 bits binary string data and store it in MUVAS. And then they could perform like uh, tiny model similarity analysis or uh, substructure analysis or superstructure analysis. So previously they are doing this with uh, a Spark cluster. Uh, so to perform this kind of analysis, uh, they previously created a Spark cluster to host around uh, 30 million molecules. So every search, I mean, every structure similarity analysis will take around 14 seconds to complete. But after we um, support those tiny model similarity metrics in MUVAS, now with MUVAS, they can analyze over 800 million molecules within one second, uh, actually 500 milliseconds on a single server with two-way CPU. So you can see um, the, the vector search is um, bringing some um, totally different value into this scenario. Okay, so yeah, now it's come to the end of my presentation. So here is the uh, useful links for Mirror's project. Uh, if you want to explore the possibility of introducing AI technology into your applications, products, uh, please think about Mulevers. Uh, it will be helpful. You can find our technical article, our uh, document, and our source code in these uh, useful links. Uh, we always help welcome people to join Mulevers community. And uh, uh, thank you guys for listening this uh, listening to this session. If you have any question, uh, please let me know.
Okay, so it looks like we've got um, a question here. It's the GPU enabled version of Milvis requires NVIDIA Pascal GPUs. Are there any support for OpenCL or AMD ROC to speed up the query? If not, is this on the pipeline? Um, uh, at this moment, yeah, Milvis only support NVIDIA GPU and requires CUDA 10.1. 10 .1. Um, yeah, we currently um, don't have any plan on OpenCL or AMD's RockM, uh, but we will see. If a lot of users need this kind of um, uh, support, we will think about how to uh, implement in uh, Milvus. Okay, it looks like we have another question here. Do you have benchmark comparisons against other search engines such as Elasticsearch? Um, yes, in in the uh, slides we have a pay, uh, we have one slide about the uh, ANN benchmark. Uh, that's available on movers.io. But you know the ANN benchmark is uh, particular for the uh, ANN area. Uh, the Elasticsearch, it's um, um, that's a, a different kind of solution. I mean, that's most about the uh, uh, text-based search uh, technology. So uh, it, it's hard to compare between these two. So uh, we don't have a comparison with uh, Elasticsearch regarding performance. All right, another question. Can Milvis extract objects from unstructured text into a database in batch? Uh, Milvis is to um, hosting the uh, feature vectors, the embedding vectors. Um, uh, the user need to uh, uh, run the uh, inference model to extract those feature vectors and uh, uh, insert those vectors into Mulus so that Mulus can help you to do the search. So um, uh, I think the question is uh, asking about if uh, like a uh, user can uh, insert the embedding vectors into Mulus in a batch. I mean, yes, uh, we support batch insert. Uh, but the the the, uh, the feature vector extract is not performed uh, within Mulus. It's uh, through the uh, model inference layer. Great. Um, that looks like all the questions so far. We still have uh, a few minutes left in the session. So if you have any other questions, put them in the Q and A chat. Here's another. Um, oh, no, never mind. It looks like that's all the questions that we've received so far. Do you have um, any last comments you'd like to add? Otherwise, um, we can continue the conversation on the Slack channel. Okay, yeah, just um, uh, on the last page, we have all those useful links. So uh, because uh, we have limited time in this session, so we, we cannot cover everything of MUVAS. So if you, if you are interested, uh, in Milvus projects, so you can just visit milvus.io website to get all the uh, information you want.
Yeah, thank you guys.